What's up, YouTube? We're back here at the Rocket Wagon Series. We're going to be talking about the changes we've had to make now with this EJ205. What we started out was going to be a reliable 300 horsepower build. Well, some, some projects snowball, this one avalanched. We're going to be talking about why. And the big reason here is, is this case half on the passenger side has uh, been welded on. One of the bearings for the timing set actually must have either must have come out or whatever, and it broke off that part of the motor. Somebody welded it back in place, and as far as I'm concerned, welding cast like that, it's just a not great situation, especially when we're looking for reliability. So we're going to go ahead and show you guys what we've got uh, that's changed. So as you can see, we got a heap of parts up here that we've acquired for this car, um, including a new motor. Um, we're going to be doing a hybrid setup for this car, and if you're not familiar with what a hybrid is, it's where you take a 2.5 short block, and you put 2.0 heads on it to make it run in the older WRX cars and be able to have, like I said, the 2.5 short block so you can get that low end power and overall you can hold more power in general. So with a big part of that, this is a actually forged motor. We have manly 100 millimeter pistons in this with eagle rods and king bearings all the way around. This has also a brand new STI crank, not a resurface STI crank, a brand new STI crank. And it should be good to well over 500 horsepower. We're not gonna be quite there yet, but in the event that down the line we go flex fuel, run an E85 and looking for big boost, um, the motor will hold up to it, which is a big part of why we're doing this. We don't wanna be building something that'll hold 400 horsepower and push it to 400 horsepower and just have a non-reliable car. That's that's never fun for the customer, it's never fun for me. Um, so we always want to be looking at running the car around 80% of what the motor is good for is my typical number I'm going for. Um, starting on that side, we got a brand new Subaru gasket kit. There really is no second to that. There is some other options out there, but in my opinion, that's the route to go just because you get everything. It comes with everything and they're about 250 bucks online and it comes with everything. Um, in this case, we bought the 2.0 gasket kit. So the only thing that we're gonna need to replace is the head gaskets since this will be a hybrid build. And I'll touch more on that shortly. Um, we have an ARP head stud kit um, to help hold some of the cylinder pressure that we'll be pushing for this car. A Gates Blue Racing timing set Grim Speed 3-Port Boost Controller, ACT Street Light Flywheel, ACT Extreme Duty Clutch, which in my opinion, those are the, that's, that's the option right there. That's by far the best option for a clutch setup for something you're looking to hold some serious power with. We have a brand new Mishimoto radiator, brand new big Mishimoto top mount intercooler, Perrin short ram intake and turbo inlet, um, this up front is a Force Performance Blue Turbo. Um, it should suit our needs extremely well and spool really fast with the, mo with the setup we're doing. Um, something I haven't touched on yet is the fact that the car came in with a full NVIDIA exhaust on it. And it also had a Killer B equal length header and up pipe. So we really should have a really reliable car when we get all done with this. Um, there's two different ways to do a hybrid build. There's a few different ways, but the two main ones, um, some people will say that you can take and take a 2.5 bottom end and put um, JE makes pistons that are hybrid pistons and they are set up to lower the um, compression ratio in the cylinders. Because what, what ends up happening is, is your 2.0 cylinder head has a smaller combustion chamber and the chambering around the valves is smaller than the 2.5. So you have a really high compression ratio if you were to put stock pistons in with stock EJ20 heads and the compression ratio is too high to run and you end up having really bad issues with tuning and making power. Um, another option is, and this is the route we'll be going, is sending these heads off. These are just the stock heads out of this car. Um, we actually will be using a different set of heads just because these ones we found some cracking in and just because of the fact that I actually have to send these heads out to California to get the machine work done. And what they'll end up doing is coming in here in the combustion chamber and opening this up to match a 2.5, or in this case, an EJ257 STI head. And like I said, that lowers the, comp the compression ratio for each cylinder and it makes it so you can properly tune this car and make 
good horsepower with the correct compression ratio. Um, there's going to be a ton more stuff that goes into this. And when we're doing these heads, we're going to be changing some stuff out. From factory, the O2, actually it would be the O2 to late O4, have what's called a shimmed cam bucket or a valve bucket. And it's not the most reliable setup for big boost. And the big issue is actually running a higher rev limiter. And it's just not a reliable setup. So we'll end up going through and we're gonna put BC um, cam spr or valve springs, I'm sorry, in this thing. Um, that's Brian Crower, their titanium single valve spring. And then while we're at it, and these are at the machine shop, we're gonna have these swapped over to shimless buckets, which would be your 05 and newer WRXs would come with shimless buckets. And it's just a far more reliable design. They end up grinding the actual bucket itself to get your um, valve lash. And while I have these at the machine shop, I'm gonna have them go ahead and set lash and do valve springs and do all of that stuff mainly because they have all the equipment to do that and they do that stuff every day so it's it's a better bet the cost is not that bad to have a valve job job done which we're going to be doing regardless just to make sure we have proper valve seal um, something we're still up in the air about is running stainless um, valves it's not necessarily needed at the horsepower level we're going at but like i said we're building this car for in the event down the line this customer wanted to go for larger horsepower numbers run it on the track run it really to its limit there's just everything that we're going to be doing is going to be trying to address some of the weaker points in these motors and how to make them last longer run more reliably not have issues this customer wants nothing to do with his car coming back in and out of the shop all the time to keep it on the road it's a, it's a pretty typical um i guess scenario that everyone always talks about Subaru's being non-reliable. So a big part of Subaru's being non-reliable is people always want to take and do half the job. You can do a lot of things to these cars and make a ton of power and you can also do a very small amount of things and keep them running and they're not going to be reliable. If you don't take the time to reseal these motors, checking your spark plugs, keeping good fuel on them and keeping up with proper maintenance on them, this is a little tiny four cylinder 2.5 liter motor and we're gonna be going for over 400 horsepower with this. That is a lot of moving parts that are being really pushed to their limit and pushed hard. If you're not doing things like proper torque specs, and obviously there's things that you don't need to properly torque, but most things are gonna be moving parts or head bolts or you know a lot of different moving parts on these motors. If you're not torquing them to their correct spec and doing things exactly how they're supposed to be done, these cars won't be reliable and you won't have a nice fun Subaru. So anytime someone tells you, oh, it's a Subaru, it's going to be non-reliable. That's, that's a pretty typical scenario is what everyone's going to say is, oh, it's a Subaru. It's not reliable. Every customer I get in here always wants to tell me about, oh, it blew up because it's a Subaru. Well, sure. It might've blown up because it's a Subaru, but the big underlying issue there is, is what kind of maintenance were you putting that car through? What kind of, you know, what kind of keeping up on all of the different moving parts and making sure that things are proper in your car to be able to run them to the level they're at. If you're going to take and go take a 250,000 mile EJ205 motor and put 20 pounds of boost to it and expect it to hold up for a long time, well, you're probably not going to have that scenario. Honestly, it all comes down to proper tuning, proper maintenance, proper, there's, anything anything you're doing on these motors if you're not doing it properly and this goes for anything you're probably not going to have a good experience um with that being said i would like to say that i go through and do the proper way to do things and the proper way to get a motor to hold power and i'm going to show you guys how to do that um a big part of that will be like i was talking about earlier getting these heads machine yeah you can do it a lot cheaper it's going to cost a lot it's going to cost a pretty good shape chunk of change to be able to get these things to where we're wanting them to be and have just as much safety and reliability as this motor does but that's what you do when you're looking to make the kind of power this customer is looking to make and have it hold up and quite frankly i wouldn't do it any other way so with that being said um this will be the end of this video and going forward we're going to be talking more and more about getting this motor ready to go in the rocket wagon 
and there's going to be a lot of stuff that has to go on. Obviously, this is a bare short block. Um, it's got an oil pump and it's got a water pump on it ready. But other than that, it is a bare short block. So we will be swapping all of the oil pan and oil cooler off of the other motor. Good chance we'll be upgrading the oil cooler. But those types of things all have to come off that other motor. And we're going to have a pretty nice little paperweight over there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the cracking before we conclude this video. Because I just uh, want everyone to see what, what happens when you have piston to valve I guess um, meshing when you snap a timing belt and the two you know like to kiss together so I'll show you guys what that looks like so as you can see you can see this light cracking right here right here right here it's not what you want to see especially in a situation where this is the passenger side head and again you have cracking here and here, small one here. It's not what you want to see on a cylinder. So you're always going to see some cracking on the cylinders like that, especially something like this that's 20 years old and it's seen a hundred million heat cycles by now. There's going to be some cracking. The biggest issue with that was the fact that that's the passenger side head. And that was the side that cylinder one and three, cylinder one I had, uh, I believe it was 18% leak down, which is a significant amount. And then cylinder three, I had over 45% leak down in that cylinder. It was coming out of the in, uh, intake valves and that would correspond with the cracking also. So in this case where I'm spending the time and money to send these to California to a professional shop, to have a professional job done, I'm just gonna send another set of heads. I've got a bunch of motors sitting over here and heads are on absolutely no shortage. Um, this will be the end of this video and thank you so much for watching. Um, I highly advise that you tune in next time we have a new video out on the rocket wagon because things are going to start getting pretty fun here. We're going to start putting this motor back together. I'm going to show you the proper way to do it. I'm going to show you the proper way for it to make good horsepower and stay together. Uh, thank you so much and please subscribe.